Well, the first thing, though, that really hits our area hard is transportation. You know this, right. obviously. Um, you've criticized using part of the sales tax for roads. That's Governor mm -hmm. McDonald's current transportation plan that was passed. Now, how would you pay for transportation? Well, I think there are, there are a variety of ways to do it that, that keeps us closer to a user paid system. But one of the important things that I think is uh, that we should talk about is decentralizing both the decision making and the funding. A lot of the money goes to Richmond and, it's, and, and the spending choices are made by a Richmond bureaucracy. And that often happens to the detriment of certain areas. And I think the Hampton Roads, the Tidewater area is one of those areas. So I think that if, you, if, if the money stayed where it was raised, and the local authorities had more of a say in uh, what projects get built, I think that would be much more equitable geographically. So then how would you, you, you would go about doing that, keeping the money in Hampton Roads, for example? Would you favor certain taxes to be levied regionally or? Well, I think, I think regardless, I, I think generally speaking, whatever you, way you raise it, it's going to be raised and it should just stay in the area that it's raised. Uh, whether you do that through a gas tax, whether you do it through tolls, whether you do it through other types of taxes, uh, it, it's, it's much more important to, to make local decision making uh, because it's more accountable and uh, there's a lot more local knowledge. Well, a lot has been said about tolls, especially mm -hmm. here because you have now tolls proposed for the midtown and downtown tunnels. Actually, they're going to be reality unless the state Supreme Court says they are unconstitutional. Um, is this what we have to look forward to basically in Hampton Roads and across the state to pay as you go, so to speak? Well, I, I, I think there's a couple important things to be said. One is that people don't like tolls when they feel like they've already paid for infrastructure and now they're paying again through tolls and they're still paying high taxes. And so the, wh when you get to a user pay system, you might have tolls, uh, you might do it through other means, but, but that would always you would always want to reduce the taxes if you're doing ch uh, congestion fees or, or tolls. You're looking at revenue neutral approach, right, right. basically. So you lower the taxes on one side and raise them on the other for people who do use it. Right. But there are many who argue, though, that everybody benefits from a good road system, even Every, if you don't have a car. Everybody benefits, but not equally. And uh, you know, there, there are families, poor families, that don't have cars, that don't use the roads, and they're, they're going to be paying a much higher, say, already paying a much higher sales tax. It's very regressive. And, you know, the, the, the benefits are unequal, and so the benefits should uh, sort of, the, the costs should go along with the benefits. Well, let's go on to health care now. You oppose Medicaid expansion as part of the Affordable Care Act, and so does the current administration, because you argue the state will be left with an increasing load as time goes mm -hmm. on. The state would have to incur more of those costs. You favor catastrophic health insurance instead to pay for the big stuff, more of a market-based approach, if mm -hmm. I'm correct. How would you convince Virginians that this vision is a better way to go? Well, I think a lot of people who have, who have been using the healthcare system either through their own means or through employ, employer-based healthcare or through Medicaid and Medicare, they recognize the problems that we're facing with the increasing uh, costs. And the only way to, to get those costs down is to uh, make, make price transparency. Uh, more of a to, to make prices more transparent to make to give people the opportunity to economize to put them more in power of, of the spending that's being done for them and the best way to do that is through a, what I what I like to to, to my, my plan is is to refocus on three things one is catastrophic uh, insurance that keeps people from the financial ruin of major diseases or, or illnesses uh, another is mental health that's an area where studies show very high returns on public spending. And the other is cash subsidies. So that giving, giving people, empowering people to use the money that's being spent on them in whatever way that they think will, will be most beneficial. And still you would have to convince people that they have to buy or, or, or purchase or pay for their own health to some degree. Mm -hmm. And that might be a hard sell to some. I think that the, when, when people, when you go out and talk to people about the status quo, they're very upset, they see all the inefficiencies, and when you present to them the idea that there's actually going to be some prices that they can look at and that they can choose, empowering them to, to make choices, I think that is very attractive to people. Ken Cuccinelli and Terry McAuliffe both favor stricter standards for reporting gifts, as does the McDonald administration, which as you know is currently under investigation for the gifts that <laughs> it received and the governor and his family. Uh, how would you convince Virginians that a service administration would operate at the highest ethical standards? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with a gift ban. I, I think that uh, we, can, we can do a gift ban voluntarily. 
I would be happy to say I, I won't accept gifts. I would also say that one of the most important reasons. You're on the record now saying that. that oh, sure, sure. Not accept any any gifts at all, or is there a limit, or? Well, I, I'm I'm I don't know. It, it, what my my view is that the more important issue is uh, is getting is getting government out of the business of giving special treatments or or using discretionary funds to give private companies you know, certain treatment. Or, or shilling for particular companies. I think, I think when the governor has to do that, he's very open to, or the, in, the incentives are created for that kind of, uh, kind of gift-giving scandal. And you can have gift bans, but there's always people trying to get around those. So the best thing to do is try and re return to the rule of law. But sure, I'll say no, no, no gifts and no limits. Uh, you're a third party candidate. Mm -hmm. We all know that. The best any has ever done for statewide office has been a few percentage points. I know you know this going in. How do you convince voters that if they pull the lever for you, they're not wasting their vote as a protest vote? I think a lot of people are already have already decided that a, another vote for the Republican and Democrat two-party system is a wasted vote. And w the definition of crazy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And so when I tell people that I'm running and they ask Republican or Democrat and I say neither, they're very happy almost elated that there is a third choice. And so for a lot of people, I don't have to make that argument. A lot of people are going to vote who, w who would have stayed home anyways. But for the, re for the remainder of the people, I think that I, I just have to make the case that there is a real opportunity here in Virginia to do something special. And that's to reject the, bipar the, the partisan bickering and actually focus on what's good for all Virginians and focus on a, a vision of Virginia that's both open-minded and open for business. So getting that message out, though, would be challenging as a third-party candidate. Do you have the, um, the background, or, or, or I should say the support staff, to, to make this uh, message, uh, to bring this message to the voters? Right. I, I would say that uh, we, we've been able to, to get the volunteers that we, we really need because libertarians believe so strongly in both economic and personal freedom that uh, these two candidates are turning off so many people We've been getting people across the board, uh, independents, moderate Republicans, and moderate Democrats who are really pitching in on this effort. So it's, you know, everything, everything we lack in the institutional uh, side, we make up for with uh, passion and, and individual contributions. The key, you say, is the message. That's right. That's right. Now, a lawsuit's recently been filed mm -hmm. against the Commonwealth because gay marriage is, is mm -hmm. illegal in Virginia. What is your position on same-sex marriage? My position is I'm for same-sex, I'm for recognizing same-sex marriage. And I think that we should, uh, I'm in favor of a democratic political process change, repealing the 2006 amendment and recognizing same-sex marriages. And kind of along that, that same thing, women's issues is kind of a hot topic right mm -hmm. now, specifically contraception and abortion. What would you do as governor to help women if they're looking for help from the government? I, I don't think that government has a role telling women whether they can take contraception and I would, I would use the governor's position to argue for, uh, for making contraception available over the, over the counter. Uh, on the abortion issue, I generally am fairly moderate and I don't like the absolutism and the political nastiness. I do think that the, the previous two bills from the Republicans uh, regulating clinics as hospitals and forcing women who go in for a, for a procedure that is legal under current law to undergo a forced assault <laughs> um, is they, they were both wrong for rule of law and scope of government reasons. My education platform is focusing as much as possible on freeing teachers and parents and children from the, this bloated bu bureaucratic system that we have, empowering parents by putting them in charge of the money that's spent on their kids, and as much as possible making teachers and parents uh, partners instead of adversaries in their children's education. I'll ask about SOL testing. Mm -hmm. you try to keep it or get rid of it? I, I would like to, I, I, don't, I don't like the testing regime that we have. I think that it, it has a lot of pernicious incentives. And I think that uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of places around the world don't emphasize testing and have much better results than we do. And I think that we just need to get back towards what we know works and to create a market for education services where we can get innovation and value creation. What about school choice? I'm very, strong, I'm very strong on school choice. I would like to see something like a universal system of school choice, whether that includes um, 
whether that includes a, a full voucher system or something with tax credits as well, remains to be negotiated.